Romeo Langford has the complete package. He can score at all three levels. He's a bucket getter. His talent level is off the chart. A prototype two guard with three level scoring potential, Indiana's Romeo Langford is one of the draft's most gifted scorers with the type of upside scouts look for in a top five pick. Langford, quick trigger, a three. His ability to stretch out the defense with that pure shot. He pulls up in a moment's notice, makes scoring look easy. A high school phenomenon in the state of Indiana, Langford has been on the radar since his early teenage years. He's been evaluated by NBA scouts at Adidas Nations, the U19 Worlds, Eurocamp, Jordan Brand, McDonald's. A tantalizing prospect, the hometown hero will be under the microscope more than ever this season in Assembly Hall, an environment that will teach scouts quite a bit about what Langford is made of. Romeo Langford is a smooth athlete with prototype wing tools at 6'6 with a 6'11 wingspan. His combination of fluidity, above average leaping ability, and an 8'8 standing reach allows him to play above the rim with ease and space. Here as only a junior in high school, he goes right at eventual number 4 pick Jaron Jackson Jr. and his 7'5 wingspan, posterizing the shot blocker. He's a versatile athlete as well, quick with his cuts, here losing Brian Bowen for the lob. He's powerful with his first step, at his best using that effortless quickness to get to the rim in both the open floor and the half court. At 6'6", Langford has great positional size, which helps him get to his spots on the floor, rising up over smaller defenders. As his frame continues to fill out, Langford will have the monster physical profile NBA teams are looking for in a two guard. From a physical perspective, Romeo Langford compares favorably to Jason Richardson. While not quite as freakish of a leaper, he's similar in terms of size, length, and frame, with Langford now listed at 215 pounds by Indiana. His outstanding physical profile is a big part of why Langford is projected as a top five pick. Lankford is an NBA caliber scorer with an advanced offensive package. Even when he looks like he's going half speed, he finds the bottom of the net, both in the open floor and the half court. He's really good in early offense situations, using his smooth athleticism changes of speed and handle to slither to the rim. He plays the game low and is able to lean on his length to get extension around the rim. He has floaters as well, here dropping the teardrop over the outstretched arm of Jaron Jackson. Langford has an advanced triple threat arsenal, generally wanting to operate out of isolation. He sets things up with a simple jab step three ball, rocking defenders back to create space. He's a streaky shooter with somewhat untraditional mechanics, but he can really get going and has an affinity for making shots with a hand in his face. If he doesn't create enough space with that jab step, he'll add in a step back going left covering considerable ground with one escape dribble while maintaining balance and knocking down a deep three you don't always see from players his age. Then when defenders have to take away his airspace, he uses low rip through moves to blow by his man, getting his shoulder past his opponent and darting to the rim. Here he rips past Kelvin Johnson on the perimeter, reading his angle to attack his top foot. Langford is comfortable off a live dribble as well. He's a fluid ball handler who can change speeds and directions smoothly. Here he uses a basic pullback to knock down a pull-up three against Jaron Jackson. Then against Brian Bowen, he gets into his live dribble game with another rip through, stopping and starting with the combo move before creating just enough space with the step back going right to get to his pull-up. This is a low percentage, off-balance shot, but the simple fact that he's capable of this speaks to his talent. The nature of his release point also helps him make tough, fading shots with a hand in his face. Now Bowen has to respect his pull-up, so Langford is able to change speeds ever so slightly, get his shoulder squared to the rim, and finish with a touch shot off the glass. He doesn't always seem like he's moving that quickly or putting much effort into his attacks, but Langford is a natural who plays at his own pace and gets to his spots by playing angles, staying low, and relying on his length. He can slash out of pick and roll as well, attacking drop coverages, here with the nifty same foot, same hand lefty finish. He's comfortable with the ball in his hands, here changing direction to split the Jaron Jackson pick and roll defense to get right to the front of the rim. And his shot creation potential shows again, setting up the rescreen here, then beating Jackson one more time with an in and out dribble into an extension finish. 
He's able to shift gears ever so slightly while playing low to the ground, making him a really tough cover even for a big time shot blocker like Jaron Jackson. Lastly, Langford has some potential as a catch and shoot guy given his natural touch despite his funky mechanics. If he's making spots, he can then attack closeouts to get into floaters or at room finishes. Overall, Langford has some of the most natural scoring instincts in the draft to go along with his impressive physical profile. Although his effort level needs a major spike, Langford has tremendous defensive potential. Here you can see a glimpse as he shows quick and active feet against Darius Baisley, keeping him front and using his length to block the turnaround attempt. He can get skinny over screens and use his size to limit penetration when he's fully engaged. If Langford can find some semblance of competitiveness down the road, he has the potential to guard one through three at the NBA level. He's a playmaker off the ball as well, using that near seven foot wingspan to get in the passing lanes or reject shots around the rim. On top of that, Langford is an outstanding positional rebounder, regularly skying for defensive boards in traffic. His willingness to muck things up on the defensive glass does bode well for his potential to improve his motor in other aspects of his game. He has natural touch and the ability to get hot in a hurry, but Langford is a streaky shooter with untraditional mechanics, severely cocking his wrist before releasing the ball. According to our database, Langford is a 28.9% three-point shooter on 194 attempts. He has a bad habit of pulling his follow through too early and overall gets a bit sloppy with his mechanics. He shoots a fairly easy ball with soft touch and good rotation, but NBA scouts will find holes to poke in his shooting form. He almost always fades on pull-up attempts also. He's a tough shot maker, but can stand to be much more disciplined with his balance at times. Teams will want to see Langford prove himself as a perimeter shooter, especially considering how willing he is to settle for jump shots. I see Langford be more aggressive. It seems almost like he coasts at times. Langford is known for his casual nature, which gets him in trouble quite a bit offensively. He fades in and out of games, not showing the level of aggression you'd hope for from a player with his talent. This is a prime example. In a big game against Darius Baisley and Princeton, Langford gives up the game time bucket to Baisley. Now, after the bucket, Langford has more than enough time to go length of the floor and create a high percentage shot. Instead, he doesn't show much urgency inbounding the ball, and then when he does get the ball back with about five seconds left, he seemingly doesn't understand time and score, wastes a couple seconds, then has to push to half court for a buzzer heave. It may seem small, but lapses like that are far too common for Langford. He's too lackadaisical with the ball, regularly turning it over against pressure, as you can see here against Keldon Johnson and Darius Baisley. He's a gifted shot creator, but doesn't react well when he has to think the game on the fly. He makes some really questionable decisions, committing far too many unforced errors and avoidable turnovers. For all of his superhuman moments as a scorer, he has some baffling stretches that may cause scouts to wonder how consistent can he be over the course of an 82 game season. He's also a bit of a ball stopper at times, pounding it on the perimeter rather than keeping it moving. Teams may wonder just how well his isolation heavy style fits within a team system. Langford just doesn't have the most natural vision, generally putting the ball on the floor to score, not facilitate. Once he gets into the paint, he doesn't see both sides of the floor, here missing the opposite big on this play, instead killing his dribble and having to kick it out to Zion. He misses a basic kick out here as well, with the defender helping well off the strong side corner. Then when he does see the play or decide to give it up, he's not all that accurate, botching the pop pass here to EJ Montgomery. Langford can be all too willing to settle for perimeter jumpers as well, lacking a degree of toughness and physicality. Here he fires up an awkward one-legged runner attempt from the elbow against Keldon Johnson. Again, just some head scratching decisions. A lot of his offense is also predicated on off-balance pull-ups, which is a tough way to live efficiently, even with his scoring instinct. He doesn't always play through physicality in the paint either opting for one foot runners rather than getting all the way to the rim and earning a trip to the free throw line. Langford's overall casual nature and contact averse style can be off-putting to NBA scouts. And it's one of the major themes that scouts will want to dig in on as they evaluate the Indiana freshman. Along with his casual nature on offense, Langford's defensive engagement and intensity are also concerns. Here's another look at that play from earlier against Darius Baisley. With his team up two down the stretch of a huge game, Langford more or less concedes the layup to Baisley, giving up after two slides. 
He's not a physical defender, and it showed over the course of that game against Baisley, who isn't exactly a bruiser. This is a sloppy play here, but again, he gives up after one slide, not showing much commitment on the defensive end. He does a nice job of getting through the screen on this possession, but then he never squares up Baisley and allows him to knife right to the rim. Then here on an island against Quentin Grimes, he lifts up on the slight head fake and gets blown by, just hasn't proven himself yet as a defensive stopper. Then in transition, he picks up the ball way too late and makes little effort to deter Baisley's shot at the rim, getting called for a half-hearted reach. He's not much of a post defender either, as he's more comfortable checking ones and twos rather than threes or big combo forwards. Then off the ball, he's constantly getting back cut. Quentin Grimes cut all over him during McDonald's All-American Week, and his lack of awareness and effort really shows off the ball defensively. Part of Lankford's draw is his potential as a two-way player given his tools, but it remains to be seen just how willing he is to maximize his defensive potential on a regular basis. If there's anyone in this draft with the sheer talent and upside to sneak into the top four of R.J. Barrett, Cam Reddish, Nasir Little, and Zion Williamson, it's Romeo Langford. He's an effortless scorer with a physical profile team's covet. No prospect will have his weaknesses tested as much as Langford, as there's nowhere to hide in Assembly Hall where basketball is religion. Given his top five talent yet frustrating deficiencies, Langford will clearly be one of the most intriguing prospects to watch this season.